What's up YouTube, William Macchio back with another video. And in today's video, I'm actually having a good friend of mine, Greg Barkey, manager of assistant referees in the MLS, talk about the life of a professional referee. So I know a lot of us, myself included, you know, we give refs such a hard time on plays and fouls or whatever, but in reality, without them, we wouldn't be able to have a proper game. So without further ado, let's get started right into this video. Please make sure you guys like and subscribe and hope you guys enjoy. two crazy moments in my referee career. Well, there's plenty of them. Um, I do remember some crazy ones. Uh, for example, in Costa Rica, the probably the top team there is Saprissa, and they play in a stadium called the Purple Dragon. And the stadium is built in such a way that it actually moves up and down when people jump on it. And behind the goal is their most fervent fan, the biggest fans that they have. They sit behind the goal. And underneath that goal in the stadium is the visiting locker room and the referee's locker room. And you can actually see the stadium move up and down, probably six, seven inches. And I tell you what, you're in that stadium and it's rocking up and down and you're in the locker room. You're more afraid that the stadiums are collapse on you. And then you go out and see these great fans. Uh, they really are into the game like you wouldn't believe. You don't forget that. Another crazy moment uh, actually happened in Honduras, uh, Mexico versus Honduras World Cup qualifier. And we were walking um, the stadium, checking the nets, etc., like we do for every match, even at the lowest level. And I just happened to look up, because the stands were already full, and I look up just as somebody threw a water bottle at me. And it was coming down, and I just happened to stick my hand up, and I caught it straight out of the air. And people actually applauded because I did that. But it was just pure luck that I happened to look up. Otherwise, it would have nailed me. And, well, who knows what would have happened after that point. Plenty of other ones. Another one. Uh, Costa Rica versus um, versus Mexico. Mexico wins the match, and we have to go out into the locker room through the by the goal, and that's where all the fans are waiting for us, loaded up with oranges, coins, etc. And the police are there shielding us with uh, their barricade things, and you just make a run for it. And I got hit on the shoulder here by an orange, a couple other things, but I made it into a locker room. I turned around, looked back at me. The rest of the crew had not taken off with me. They were still out there. So the police had to go back and get them and bring them into the locker room. Most of the players in MLS quite simply are very nice people off the field. On the field, they're very aggressive because that's their job. But once they're off the field, you find them to be very friendly and hospitable. Um, pretty much all of them. How fit are MLS referees and officials? Let me tell you this. In distance, they will probably outrun anybody on the field. In distance. Now, of course, different than a player. You're not turning back and forth so much. You're not sprinting as much. But our referees are very fit. They, they have um, fitness coaches. They wear the Garmin um, uh, on, their, on their back like a lot of players do now. And we actually know how far they go, how far they've sprinted, how far they've walked. And they have to do a fitness um, routine every single day. Uh, no longer do you see the overweight um, official, especially at the professional level. Like the, some of the college level and below, you might see that per person anymore. But top level, at the pro level, the referees have to be very fit. And they run more distance than any of the players in length, maybe not in sprint speed, etc. But they will cover more distance than almost any player on the field. They also have to be able to sprint and be able to not get fatigued at the end because we know one thing. Players and officials, if they get fatigued at the end of the match, they tend to make more mistakes. And I know players make mistakes when they get fatigued. Referees start making mistakes more at the end of the match when they're fatigued. So we work on that. They train every single day. They have a fitness coach. And really, if you are a top athlete, you can be a top referee. So how do referees deal with negativity and, you know, the, the pressures from outside? Well, first of all, most referees don't want to see their name in the paper afterwards. It's usually never anything positive being said. So in that case, most referees always want to have the decisions be right. Now, how do you deal with negativity on the field? Most of it, you just don't hear. You, you turn a deaf ear to it. You walk away. Most players and most coaches are just reacting out of passion for the game. They're, they're getting emotional. 
It's when it's, it, it continues and doesn't stop, that's when the referees usually start dealing with it. So that's usually the case with more things that if you just say something and walk away, it's usually not going to be dealt with. However, if it's prolonged and if it's personal, the referees will deal with it. Like for myself, I didn't hear a lot of things. However, I did really get bothered by players on the bench saying something because for me, you're not even on the field, you're on the bench. You don't really have the right to say anything about the officials on the field. If you're off the bench on the field, well, now maybe you can say something to me. But in most cases, that was, that just was something I always felt like the bench players just had no right to be complaining about things on the field. They're on the bench. Referees do a lot of review and analysis after a match. Um, they get a game tape. They'll go review the entire match. They'll look at every key decision they made. And then on top of that, we have observers, we have, of course, management staff that look at every decision and will decide if it's right or wrong. And they actually get rated on correct calls and incorrect calls. And believe it or not, in MLS, and, and for most referees, they get 92 to 94 percent of all call decisions correct. Now, the next part is when you add VAR, it goes up to 97 to 98 percent of all calls correct. So really, we're looking at the 2 to 3 percent where the error is. Now, players may not think so. But when you analyze every decision the referees make, the ones that players really are concerned about are the ones like a penalty kick or a red card, etc. But we look at all the decisions they make, including simple fouls, etc. And we rate them as correct or incorrect. Um, but tons of review and analysis. At this level now, nobody gets away with making any kind of mistake that's not been seen and analyzed by 15, 20 people. Okay, what's the best part about being a referee? I tell you, tell you the best part about being a referee is you really do have the best seat in the house. You are on the field with some of the top players in the world. In, in my career, I have been fortunate enough to referee Messi, Beckham, Donadoni for some who are older, uh, some of these great players. And when you get to be that close, you really see how good they are. And so if you love the sport, if you love soccer, it's a great place to be if you can't be a player. And I always wanted to be a player, professional player, probably wasn't quite good enough. But the next step is being a referee. And really, the level of athleticism and how much you have to work is still the same. But also, you get to be on the field. And that's really the best part of being a referee.